Hey everybody, I'm Angelique, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. This video is my BSG surgery update, a weight loss surgery update. I had weight loss surgery in May 2022. I'm from Queens, New York. And I am down 64 pounds, okay? I did not lose any weight. Um, November 2022 is month six and I didn't lose any weight at all in month six but in month five I lost that four pounds so yes I've officially stalled <laughs> in my sixth month and um, I'm pretty pissed off about it um, because I do see other people who have already lost a hundred pounds within six months um, most people that I know who had the surgery, whether it was gastric or VSG, I know that they lost between 80 to 100 or 120 pounds um, within their six months. Um, I did go see my doctor, my not my doctor, but my nutritionist. I did go see my nutritionist in October, which was month five. And um, she's saying that she's not too concerned because everyone's body is different um there's some people who just drop the weight like that the surgery um you know i guess works with their body better and my body is not i guess responding to it faster um as other patients and she thinks that it might have to do with my pcos as well so you know as some of you know i have pcos and it's a hormonal imbalance. So yeah, I had weight loss surgery, but I also have a hormonal imbalance that impacts you keeping on weight or gaining weight. Um, and it impacts your wound, and it, it impacts the woman's um, ovaries, cystic ovaries. And there's even certain diet that as a PCOS um, woman who has PCOS, certain things I cannot eat that is funny that is on the diet for weight loss, um, you know, gastric patients, right? Um, so figuring out the diet also is very interesting, right? Where I don't feel comfortable eating a lot of dairy. I don't, my body doesn't react well to dairy but they promote that you know a lot of cheese and things like that for protein um you know on the gastric uh you know sleeve diet plan so there's a lot of things that i noticed that i don't eat as like my nutritionist is telling me to eat you know i don't eat red meat and she's bringing up red meat and pork and all these different things that i don't eat i noticed that so i'm having to um critique the diet and figure out what my body responds to and still be conscious that okay yes I have to stick to a certain diet plan because I've had the VSG surgery but I also have to be more conscious that it may not work with my body because I have PCOS so it is annoying I'm still proud of myself you know 64 pounds is still um a good amount of weight to lose um and my body feels amazing you know um i don't feel like i'm slugging my body around i don't feel tired like i used to and if i do it has something to do with just what i've done in a day or spiritually if i'm going through something um less back pain less knee pain um, my cycle is regular. I still do go through pain, which I don't know what that's about. Um, why do um, women who have VSG surgery, why do we experience so much pain after the surgery during our time of the month? But the pain is starting to calm down and I think it's because I'm not eating as much meat. So if you're having a lot of pain, maybe cut down on the dairy and the meat and that will help. So I noticed that and it's just becoming less. Before I used to have a cycle that lasted maybe 
10 to 14 days. Yeah, it was that bad and um, heavy too. So I'm noticing that it's not as heavy. It'll be heavy like the first two or three days. So it's lasting between five to six days, which is amazing. And I'm also noticing like, I can't really keep up with knowing when it's going to come because I'm just going to the bathroom and going, oh, my cycle is here. So I have to pay attention to my app because before when I was heavier, my cycle would give me a whole week. I would have like a whole full week of just P PMS symptoms, a lot of pain, I mean, depression, and then the following week my period would come. Now I can just be like, oh, what is that? And realize, yeah, I have my cycle. So a win is a win. <laughs> so that is a win. Um, losing weight is balancing out my hormones. So I'm happy about that. Even though I haven't lost 100 pounds as I wish I did within six months, the fact that me losing this this um, 64 pounds is helping me have a better quality life to do with my PCOS in my cycle, I am so happy. All right, so let's get let's let's get to the get actually no. So I did see my nutritionist and another thing that she told me was an issue, I don't eat enough. So um a lot of people assume like bigger people uh eat a lot and I always had poor eating habits since I was a child, a teenager. And I even kind of developed like almost like an eating disorder um, when I was in elementary and junior high. Um, you know, growing up in a narcissistic home, um, I had this narcissistic stepfather that focused on my weight. I would go to the doctor and instead of my doctor saying to my mom, oh, she's gained some weight, let's put her on a diet, let's get her, you know, um, and do, you know, let's, let's make healthier choices for her the doctor would point to me, would turn to me as a child and say, Angelique, you're so fat. Stop gaining weight. You're too fat. And uh, yeah, so technically I was abused, <laughs> verbally abused by the narc stepfather and by even my doctor growing up, my pediatrician. Dr. Melva of Queens, New York. Yeah, I don't even know if she's still alive. Uh, I think she was a Guyanese Indian woman. I will never forget her. Um, still get flashbacks about that um just telling me how fat i was and this is ridiculous you're getting too big because she didn't want to directly talk to my parents um horrible oh, horrible horrible trauma from that but i will never forget that um so that caused me to starve myself so i remember you know, being a kid and going to school, going, no, mommy, I don't eat breakfast. I'm gonna eat, I'll eat breakfast at school and I wouldn't eat breakfast, I wouldn't eat lunch. I would only eat dinner. And I started to lose weight and my mom was like, what's going on? How are you losing this weight? Like, are you playing double dutch at school? Like, what are you, are you doing something different? Like, what's going on? Uh, but yeah, um, I carry those habits on into my adulthood to where there are days where I just don't eat. I'll go a whole day and then by midnight I'll have a headache and go, oh shoot, I didn't eat today. And then with the surgery, I noticed, um, you know, your cravings are not the same. You, you literally have to force yourself to eat some days. So I have to break that habit and even during my cycle too, I barely eat during my cycle. So there's like a window of a week. So there's four or three weeks in a month. That week when I'm on my cycle, because of the pain, because of the icky feeling of having my cycle, I barely eat, which is not good. Um, so my doctor, um, my nutritionist is telling me to at least eat soup, drink smoothies during my cycle basically have be on a diet liquid um during my cycle basically like not eating is making your body go into shock of course and just holding on to the weight because it doesn't know when it's going to get food next so it's like you're having all these spikes all day 
So I am training myself to eat more, <laughs> believe it or not, to eat balance, at least two balanced meals a day. And I'm finally like getting on a schedule and eating snacks in between. So that could be why um, you're stalling if you're having that issue. Eat more and drink more water. Also, I'm noticing, yes, poop. Poop, poop, poop. You know, I think people, I, I don't know why a colonic or a cleansing is not uh, mandatory before surgery. And it's something that I really wish I did. And I think I want to go get a colonic <laughs> for Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas, but, you know, next month for the holiday after everything is over, the holiday is over, you know, the, um, you know, Christmas, New Year's, I'm not going to be seeing people, not drinking, not eating. I think I want to get a colonic for the new year um, because even like between the PCOS and the extreme bloating, so my stomach can go flat, flat, and then be like looking like I'm pregnant. I'm noticing that. So that means that there's a gut issue. Like get into gut health, okay? You already got 80% of your stomach taken out. Get into gut health. Take vitamins. Uh, eat cleaner, do fast, and things like that. So I, um, I'm gonna get more into gut health because I feel if you are not cleaned out in your intestines, how are you gonna be losing that weight? So sometimes you can't move, you can't get the weight loss moving because you're backed up. And I noticed that like for weeks, my stomach was huge. And I'm like, why is like the rest of my body looks the same, but my belly would be huge. And I'm like, oh, it's just my PCOS. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm not pooping two or three times a day or I'm pooping every other day. And yes, you are going to poop less in comparison to how you were pooping before because we're not taking in as much food, right? But um, I wasn't pooping enough. So I started eating more, you know, leaf, leafy greens and things like that, drinking more water. So now I'm pooping more consistently and I'm noticing my tummy is going back to flat, flat, like it was in the summertime. <laughs> and for the month of November, I did not drink any alcohol. I drank red wine and stuff like that. But Cutting out the alcohol too, I feel would help you because there's so much calories like in frozen drinks and, you know, it's also, you know, messing with your internal organs. So cut down the alcohol, cut down the dairy, cut down the meat and see like, is that going to trigger a little bit of a weight loss? Um, so yeah, having to practice eating balanced meals because I, I, the truth is I really did get lost after four months where it's just like, oh, I'm just eating once a day. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be drinking, I think 63 ounces of water a day, where now I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. And then I started drinking like 50 ounces at least, and then my zero calorie iced tea or Gatorade or vitamin water, I wasn't bringing enough fluids at all, at all. But, um, I'm going to do better in 2023. I am going to do better. And I definitely, my goal is to lose another 60 pounds. I want to be at 120 pounds sometime um, before my 40th birthday. My 40th birthday is in August of 2023. So that's my goal to be 60 pounds less. So I got six, six more months to lose uh, 60 pounds, right? In eight months, I guess, you know, starting in January until my 40th birthday and i'm going to do it i'm going to do it it gives me enough time um a friend of mine asked me oh do i feel more beautiful she thinks i look more beautiful um she's a friend slash hair client of mine um and i was like no i've always felt beautiful i always thought i was beautiful i don't suddenly feel more beautiful because i lost 60 pounds um, I do like the way I look more now, like in my face, my face was much bigger, much bigger. 
So I like the way I look when I'm watching my YouTube videos, my content, my TikTok videos. I like the way I look and I, I find it funny like the increase of men just by me being a little bit smaller. I'm noticing like men are stopping and like helping me if I need some type of help like the other day. I'm like bending over trying to put my air fryer in a you know reusable bag I went shopping on Black Friday and men don't usually stop and help me all the time you know or like giving up their seat for me holding doors more I'm noticing I'm like damn I only bought 60 pounds I'm still big you know but that little 60 pounds I'm noticing I guess I look smaller to the world so I'm noticing the increase in public of men helping me or looking at me and stuff like that, even if I do have a winter coat on. So sometimes you may not be losing pounds, but you're losing inches. I definitely notice that I'm still losing inches. My clothes are not fitting feminine cut anymore. And I used to wear a 3X and now I need about a 1X or extra large in certain things I'm noticing. Um, so I used to wear like a 22 or 20 in um, women's, right? But now I need to get like an 18 or in, depending on the company, maybe even a 16 when it comes to like leggings or pants. I have some leggings that are even a 1X and they're too big. And I think also because it's American cut. So I'm like, oh, I got to get me an extra large pair of leggings. Because <laughs> I wear leggings mostly all the time. Um, but my jeans are falling off. Oh my goodness, it feels disgusting. Um, but my winter coats look so much better on me. Like they're just fitting like just straight, you know. Um, but the three X's and a lot of two X's are not fitting me. I've always been much smaller on top than I have been on the bottom. Like all my weight would be in my stomach, thighs, and butt. And I've always been just much smaller on the top. So especially on the top, I'm having to buy like one or two X tops. No three X's. Three X's look horrible on me now. Um, so yeah. Sometimes if you just need to see your progress, put your clothes on and look at yourself in the mirror. Um, I'm also feeling more comfortable, like showing a little bit more skin. <laughs> you know, I noticed that um, it's winter time, but I don't mind wearing a shirt that's more cut close to my body or even a sheer top with a bra underneath. I don't care, <laughs> you know, so I noticed that where my silhouette is much smaller. Um, so I am seeing somebody right now, still single, but still seeing somebody rekindled a past love flame. And it was really interesting because he hadn't seen me in about two or three years, two years. And when he saw me, he was like, whoa, your body looks so different. So I did get that confirmation and it wasn't like an ego boost. But it was like a confirmation because I've known this person since I was about 25, 26. So he's seen my body go, you know, all different directions. But his eyes lit up. He was just like, oh, wow, you look good. Like, wow. Like, he's like, you always had a body, but it's just like, it's just more compact. Like, you just, it's like more feminine cut instead of just being wide. <laughs> so, yeah, um. I was celibate or abstinent, so to say, not really celibate for a year after a breakup, and now I'm not celibate. <laughs> so, how was it the first time hmm, I got some after weight loss surgery? Um, It was the same. <laughs> it was the same. I don't know if it's because I've been with this person before intimately, but it was the same, like nothing down there felt weird, okay? I, it sounds weird, like you had surgery on your stomach, maybe you think like something went wrong down there. No, it still feels the same vaginally. Um, there wasn't like any discomfort or pain or anything like that. Um, but this is what I will say. 
So because I lost 60 pounds, you're going to have loose skin. So I do have loose skin. And two things that really bother me is like my arms. Like, I don't know if you can see, you know, it's not that bad, but yeah, I do have loose skin on my arms and I would love to probably get my arms done in the future. But like up here is still very, very solid. I don't know if you could tell, like I'm still pretty solid, you know, um, but my inner thighs are not firm anymore. So that's something that really bothered me. And I don't think I don't, it didn't bother this particular man, you know what I'm saying? So the thing that bothered me didn't bother him. So yes, there's going to be things about your body that you're going to be like, oh, I don't want you to see that. And I was like kind of freaking out. Like my inner thighs are just like so wobbly. They're very like soft and it's, at least it's not hard, but still it's just not like I would probably want to get my inner thighs done um, in the future. So that is something I noticed. Like my stomach didn't bother me. Anything on my body, also my body didn't bother me, you know, during an intimate moment. But I noticed like my inner thighs, I was just like looking down like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. But he wasn't paying attention to it. So learn to embrace these imperfections that's in your head. And a lot of times your partner's not even thinking about that. <laughs> They're just trying to get to the goods. <laughs> They're not even paying attention. But I did talk to him about it. And I was just like, I don't know if you noticed, but like my inner thighs bother me. He was like, what's wrong with them? What happened? You know, so I don't know if he was just being nice, but it definitely bothers me. So yes, I, I already had this, these two things on my body that I just... Uh, uh, like I want, I wish I had money to get surgery already, right? As much as I hate surgery, I still am like in the future, I gotta get that fixed. My boobs actually got fuller. It's very weird. So it's almost like your body starts to adjust. So I, I am, I am down. I was a double D and then right now I can wear a D or a C cup. And I, I was a 44 double D. Now I'm buying bras that's like a 42C or 42D or even a 40, depending on the company. So yes, my back rolls is smaller and I still got some boobs. You know, they are more hangier, but they're still full. Okay. So they're not completely gone. <sighs> I do something called mirror work where I look in the mirror and I actually talk to what part of my body, look it up. I know it sounds crazy, but I talk to what part of my body that I want to shape and mold. There's been people who actually, whatever they believed, it started to actually transform on their body, okay? So I still have to do that daily. I'd be forgetting, but um, maybe set an alarm in your phone to do your mirror work and you just talk to the parts of your body and literally your body will start to transform. Kind of like when somebody keeps saying, I'm sick or I'm going to die, and they literally do. You can actually do amazing things with your mind. So look into it. It's called mirror work. It's like a manifesting using the mirror, and it's very powerful. Um, but yes, I will continue to give y'all an update. Um, but no real body dysmorphia or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for that. Um, sorry, somebody's texting me right now. But I'm just so thankful uh, that at least I lost 64 pounds. And I know I am going to lose that other 60 pounds in 2023. Um, oh, yes. My habit, I like to go out to eat. And that's something I need to cut down. <laughs> I do need to cut that down too because, um, you know, you can pick up a lot of oil and calories by going out to eat. And then I see some other BSG people and they go out to eat every week and they're losing the weight. Um, but yeah, I had twisted my foot the beginning of November, so that has cut down my walk-in regimen. I do have weights, um, so I'm going to have to, uh, you know, 
be on top of like at least lifting weights i need to um so i've never been like a big exercise or gym person but that's something i realized the surgery is not enough for me i still need more physical exercise especially in order to keep my elasticity and um give myself more of a shape all right so that is my six month update thank you to everybody who has supported me through this journey thank you for all the beautiful compliments and please don't email me anything <laughs> i'm working with my doctors thank you to those who have given me some past information um i i was supposed to meet up with uh my surgeon's assistant but i canceled that appointment because it's pointless to be talking to her right now um but i think i'll go see her in january i, I kind of want to talk to my surgeon not his assistant um but sticking to your nutritionist is major is key definitely let them help you figure out because some people get the surgery and they never go back and get help and i'm so glad that i am sticking with the office and you know telling them what's going on and they can help me oh yes i do have an appointment but there's a it's like medication it's almost like a diet pill so to say that they give to gastric um candidates um patients um that it speeds up the weight loss so i am considering taking it but unfortunately this doctor is backed up till i think april or may i'm on a waiting list so if somebody cancels then i'll see him so pray for me that somebody cancels maybe in january and i'm able to get an appointment and get my prescription so a lot of times some people who have the surgery they're not losing the weight fast enough or their metabolism their body is not adjusting to the surgery so they give these patients medication that actually speeds up the process of the weight loss so um may of the next year i guess or may or april will make a year so hopefully i'll be able to get the medication and i'm gonna pray that it doesn't do anything to my heart because there's some people that said they took the medication and it gave them heart palpitations and it made them lose weight but it gave them heart issues i don't have any heart issues and i don't need them so i'm definitely going to be praying on it and using my spiritual discernment to figure out if this is going to be something that i really want to do if i really want to take this medication to help me lose the rest of the 60 pounds that i want to lose but yes I, my goal is not to be skinny i've always loved being i know it may sound ignorant i always love being a voluptuous woman I'm not trying to be skinny mini. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind be, being maybe 180, 190, but I don't desire to be 150, 160. I just don't. You know, um, I just want to be a healthier version of me, and that is the goal. You know, so um, I was in the 300s, and now I'm in the 200s, and I'm so proud of myself for that. And this was a major step into some people that judge a lot of people and i'm here to let y'all know this is not easy guys it's not everyone's body is different and i am one of those candidates that is living proof that i had surgery six months ago and only lost 64 pounds you literally have to bust your ass and if you don't eat well you will gain that weight back i had a friend that lost 100 pounds after she got gastric and the girl is back at 300 in a year a year after her surgery she gained all that weight back it is only a tool it is not a, a quick fix okay it's not what you think it's really not what you think so just take into account that everyone's body is different and some of us just have to work extra hard and then there's some people who get the surgery and they just lose the weight like it's nothing their body just reacts differently to it and I thought I was going to be that. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to lose 100 pounds in six months. <laughs> My body said, uh, no, you're not. But um, I'm still um, thankful because I heard there's some people who don't lose no weight. 
you know so it's really about changing your mindset changing your eating habit changing your lifestyle and just making better choices all right so that is my six month update i will do another update as soon as more weight starts to come off of me it's pointless or something different happens to my body then i will make a video but talk to you soon if you um, want to donate to my channel you can um, all that information will be in the description bar and in the comment section but mostly my channel is based on spirituality god bless and i'll talk to you soon when i start losing some more weight <laughs>